Ms. Chong, So V, ladies and gentlemen, all the friends in the publishing world, good morning to all of you here. I'm speaking on behalf of the Hong Kong Publishing Federation to welcome all of you to this uh, special forum. Uh, so special thanks to all our, our speakers who come all the way to Hong Kong to share their views with us. Today, because of uh, the uh, IT, IoT as well as the Internet and all these special IT technology, we have changed our mode of learning and also our mode of operation of our business. And we're facing unprecedented challenges in the world. So this, indeed, this is something we have to face, you know, the world over, not only in Hong Kong, but all the other counterparts in the world. In the, the previous first years, I understand in different book fairs in the uh, region that we need to carry on with our reading habits and our publishing um, tradition as a way to maintain our human civilization. So in the recent book fair, so the slogan is to make publishing a new initiative, a new moment and a new momentum for the people. And actually one of the theme of the forum is to contact and transformation and changes to meet challenges. So today, uh, as a representative of Hong Kong Publishing Federation, we have to demonstrate the theme of uh, initiative and uh, innovation as one of our theme. So innovation and creativity is actually the momentum driving our industry. So I we have invited a number of uh, um, speakers coming to talk about this topic. We have invited the very distinguished Mr. Ling Tian Lai, who is the COO of the Global Views Commonwealth Publishing Group in Taiwan, to talk to us about how this um, industry is changing. We understand that Tian Ting is also our, our talk, our, our, our speakers in this in this conference. We have invited Mr. Chong Wen Ming to come to talk to us and share his experience. We understand that Dragonfly is a leading internet broadcast company recently. They have also created many of the uh, very top contents. And of course, Macro Hill is one of the largest publishing uh, companies in the world. They have not only acquired a new um, acquisitions and also combined with other publishing companies to form the, one of the largest uh, players in this area. So we are very uh, fortunate to invite Mr. Jones, Joseph Chong, who is the Managing Director of Asia Macro Hill, to come and talk to us and share his experience. So I think the content is very substantial and a very uh, well planned. We understand that publishing is an important thing and reading is one of the key issues that we're all concerned about. This For this year, we have two surveys about reading habits in Hong Kong, which we should take special concern about. The number one, we have uh, undertaken a three-year survey on the reading habit of Hong Kong uh, readers. The important thing is to maintain a sustainable development in reading. The second survey is about the reading uh, habits of the parents. We understand that parents is actually one of the most in, uh, important influential factors trying to uh, foster the reading habits of the children. So I'm not going to draw al along about these two particular surveys because these are already available on the, on the, on the website. In one of the uh, publishing forum in, to in Tokyo conducted this year, we understand that under the new world and under the new technological breakthrough, we have the uh, IoT and uh, internet. No matter what kind of reading habits, the publishing sector has to maintain its momentum and also to insist on their uh, on on the effort in order to promote a sustainable reading habit. We understand that reading and servicing are closely related. Today, we publish not only for survival, 
for uh, continuity and also for development, but also to have a breakthrough. Today, we have to adopt a, a adopt the learning mentality in order to learn more and also to face the challenges for tomorrow. And ladies and gentlemen, the forum will now begin. 各位来宾，论坛即将开始。May we first invite Mr. Lin Tianlai, President of the Commonwealth Publishing Company, to come on stage to share with us his presentation, "Publishing a Choice." 有请天下文化社长林天来先生。Mr. Lin, it's your turn. Thank you to you all. So, Ms. Zhong and Dr. Li and all the distinguished speakers and also the ladies and gentlemen, all the guests. Well, actually, in Taiwan, I rarely uh, take any speeches and presentations like this. So today it's very unusual for me to do a, a presentation in Hong Kong. I have only got 30 minutes, so I have to rush through because I have got a lot to tell you and a lot to share with you. And, you know, to put it very simple words, public to publish is a choice. From my personal point of view, I would like to talk about uh, what is the mode of operation for our company. Uh, that is the. Uh, Global Views Commonwealth Publishing Group. First of all, I would like to talk about our founders. You know, the founders is a steering effort, and they're very influential on the future direction of our company. So they are all the economists. So we have uh, two founders. Uh, that's Wang Li Hen, Li, Madam Wang Li Hen, and also another economist is uh, Mr. Uh, Gao Tongjing. They are also professors and also distinguished media workers. My experience told me if I make a choice, this will have a change to bring a change to the whole world. There are three numbers, three kinds of changes which would change the world. What have you read? Who are your friends and what kind of job are you doing? So all these three important con um, factors will actually influence the world and also how you can change the world. So what you read actually dictates or determines who are your friends. Because when you, what you read is what you have read is what is your property and what is your wealth and what is the, the things you have uh, uh, take possession of. So. What you read actually dictates who you met and who you make friends with, and that is what you're going to choose to make a choice in your occupation. So this is the consequential cycle. What? Remember when I was in school, I grew up in the rural area in Taiwan, and I graduated from a polytechnic my assistant and my secretary, they graduated from the National Taiwan University and they went on to further their studies in the UK. I came from a very, very humble background. I went to work in a school. I was fixing the swimming pool, cleaning the bathrooms. And one day, it just happened that the school that I was working for was looking for a librarian, and nobody wanted to become a librarian. And so I applied for that job. And so I was just an employee, and yet I ended up becoming a librarian. I was provided with accommodation by the school um, because I was very handy. Um, everybody had a difficulty, and I was the person that they came to. And so we have to become somebody who is useful. It is important that we 
can be we can create values, and so I became a librarian. I was making eight thousand new Taiwan dollar a month at that time. And I was the first to go to work, and I was the last to leave work, and I had to take care of myself. And I sleep. Very briefly, and I would sleep from seven p.m. to eleven p.m. and then I got up and went to the library to read. I read books written by very very famous writers, and. I was actually doing two jobs. I was both the librarian and also、um, a handyman of the the school. And then I wrote an article and I、um, submitted my contribution. And then I、um, I won the award. The organizer、uh, called the school of my、uh, pr called called the the principal of my school and and、um, to congratulate me and the founder of this publishing house came to Hualien where I was working and the founder saw me and. He said to me that I looked like a school teacher instead of a handyman, and if I ever went to Taipei,、uh, I could、um, call him up, and then I wrote him a letter, and I received a letter from him, and he was offering me a job. And I thought he was going to give me a very, very good job because I I won an award, and so I went to see him in Taipei. And the human resources、uh, guy asked me to submit my qualification to me to him. And but I had no qualification to speak of, and so the human resources guy asked me, "Why are you here?" I said, "Well, the boss asked me to come here."、Um, and then the guy asked me, "What can you do?" I could not have told him that I could、um, fix the light bulbs and stuff like that.、Um, eventually, they offered me a job, and they also gave me a place to stay. But this is not an ordinary place. Instead, it's just a spot in the boarding house, in the in the warehouse. And so I spent three years sleeping in the warehouse. And then they were looking for a general manager. I became the general manager. This company、uh, was founded with two hundred thousand New Taiwan dollar, and now is worth more than three hundred million New Taiwan dollar. And we had at that time twenty people in the staff, and now we have three hundred people. And so, even if you live in the gutter, you have to look up to the sky so that you can excel. Whether we are talking about a job or or anything else, you just have to look up to the sky. And this is my personal story. So we have a lot of business units, and I will call. I will. Just walk you through. 
We call it MBA plus magazine books activities plus. Instead, of, in addition to the magazine, we also have a cafe. We also have a bookstore. We have Harvard Business Review. And the Chinese edition, Chinese edition、uh, has one of the largest subscribers, and the e-copy has more subscribers to the、um, hard copy. And our publishing house、um, is also very influential. We publish a number of.、Uh, Books. And we also have a studio. We can produce documentaries. We also have a social media. I would encourage you to follow us.、Um, we offer courses. We offer content e-commerce. We also have、uh, digital marketing. We、um, also have、um, podcast. We have podcast by very famous instructors, and we also have、um, e-books. We also have various online and offline activities, and so. This is the flagship.、Um, this publishing house was founded in 1982, and I'm going to focus on this. Ideas with impact is our core. It's very challenging. I don't really participate in publishing、uh, industry activities because we don't publish. We don't sell papers. We are an learning organization. We are a knowledge platform. We are not just a printing house. And so. I like to talk about the blue ocean strategy. We've been thinking about not doing what printers do, and we want to focus on things that printers or publishers don't do, and we want to create values. There are fourteen different business units in our organization, and they are very flexible. Sometimes they are no longer relevant. Sometimes we want to integrate two or three together, and so. We have to appraise our business units. We have to reinvent ourselves every year because if you don't reinvent yourselves, and other will invent you. And this is an author、um, from the United Kingdom, Charles Handy. He's written、uh, a dozen letters to his grandkids, and this book is on the second curve. The second curve is very, very important. We need to anticipate the second curve. 
So before your existing curve reaches its curve, you have to think about the second curve. For instance, 50 years ago, uh, I was anticipating my retirement and I thought I was going to become a security guard because it, the retirement is inevitable and is going to be decided by my boss. And this is the same for an organization. We have to anticipate. We have three principles. Um, number one, we do not want to publish the largest number of books. And we don't want to be the largest. We don't want to make the largest amount of money. But we have very good turnover. We're growing every year. So we're not the largest, but we want to be a greatest publisher. What do I mean by the greatest publisher? Well, we have a formula when we choose on which books to publish. For instance, um, the autobiography of Steve Jobs is very successful. We have very good sales. So the books are very important. If this is a very important book, and then we'll publish. Even though we um, lose money on selling a very good book, it doesn't matter. We've been publishing um, for the past 30 years, and we published more than 4,000 titles. None of them is um, pornography, violent, unverified, or with personal attacks, nothing. So this is our principle that guides our way of choosing uh, which books to publish. So we publishing is a choice. We need to choose the success of the success. Let me give you an example. So these are the books that we publish. Um, the Blue Ocean Strategy has more than 300,000. Execution has more than 300,000 in Taiwan. Um, for instance, um, we also publish um, books by Jack Ma, by Tencent. The fifth discipline, we publish more than 400,000. Um, books on science, more than 200,000. Many of you have read these books. Um, so these were all published by us, religious leaders. Um, we also have a biography by Mr. Ma Yingzhou, former president of Taiwan. So, for a publisher, it is important for us to have an impact on quality and quantity. We should not only focus on popularity and the number of books to be sold. So we have to really publish the quality and the top-ranking books as one of our vision and our objective. That is why we have made this the very important target of Commonwealth Publishing Group. So you heard about this on the Nari, the book called Case. We invited them to come to Taiwan. He comes from Israel. He spoke only three of them all together. I think it constitutes the three most important books in the world at the current time. And these are the most important elements that a publishing company should pursue in the future. I have a very limited time now. So I would like to talk to you how we do the marketing and to make it an enlightening um, effort. We have done a lot of work. Number one, we did it in the network like many other counterparts. We do a lot of promotion, marketing, F&B, line, so on. 
all kinds of promotion and publicity on the network. We have all our own websites for promotion. For the company group, we have about 1.3 million uh, followers. And actually, our chief editor, he is a very influential uh, figure in the world. He is in, if he is in uh, Shanghai, it's so good. We have invited the KOL Wenxian as one of our um, narrator to help us with the promotion and the overall publicity. We have also invited specialists and professionals to have these uh, book reviews. And actually, we sell the book reviews. We do not give it, give it up free. We have invited all of KOL to help us, the opinion leaders, to share their views. They conduct their own direct broadcast. And we have the podcast as well. So every time we did it with the different kinds of media, for each book, we try to connect all different uh, KOLs and interested subgroups and readers so that they can actually uh, create the new followers. For example, each KOL, they have own followers. They will be the leaders and trying to enhance a whole new group of readers following them. So this is a kind of connection in a sort of multipli multiplication and also in a sort of a GP manner. So this is actually of explosive power. At the same time, we also have direct broadcasting. We have e-books, uh, e-publishing. We have uh, an organized special book review, sharing, and so on. So this is Sun Wenxi. He has arranged a special uh, interview in Shanghai. So you can imagine if they sell 100 for each book or 200 for each book. So how much would that all together? And also uh, e-publishing, how much it will cost? And what kind of uh, profit making is what we're talking about? About the copyright and all the patents for translation, we also sold all these uh, copyright and the patent um, to different um, our media uh, media um, uh, helpers. So we asked them how many books actually they sold. We tried to compare how much they sell in Taiwan and how much they sell in overseas. I'll let you know the figures. This is our figures. So uh, later on, we also have podcasts and audio um, talk shows. Three together, the total amount is about 200,000 all in total. When we sell e-publishing, there's only about 20,000. So all together, we understand that the electric uh, marketing only constitute about 10% of the total sale. So each one of them will be carrying a special um, token in terms of profit making. So the profit itself is over about 70 million. When you choose to publish a book, it is a very serious and a very important decision to make. So that is why we have to read quality books. We have to actually choose the high quality uh, content. Our leader told us, are you there when you said you read a book? Even you have very little income, you have make little money, you still have to buy a book to read. They keeps you going. They makes you a human being. The most important thing is if you can write a book, so much the better. If you can't write a book, you have to do something to help other people to write a book. This is what my told I've told myself. I will keep being. I learn from other people. So that is why we have to keep reading. We have to keep learning and also to promote the publishing industry as a way of encouraging people to uh, write. I keep telling you that life is a matter of choices. So life is a choice. To publish is also a very important kind of choice. 
is a very high level of choice, making a choice. Talking about myself, I grow from a grassroots level. I have uh, nine brothers and sisters in a very poor family. I grow up in a very horrible condition. I was uh, poorly educated. I work in the, my uh, village uh, as a handyman, and then I start working as a, uh, a, 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 a storage helper when I in when I was working in the Taipei. But I just keep on reading. I keep on enriching myself and enlightening myself. And then I become the uh, editor of uh, this company. So it's no way that you can learn that you can take your, your mobile. You just read the mobile, read all these garbage information. There's no way that you can learn and become enlightened. You have to make the best use of a mobile as a way of learning and educating yourself and also for the lifetime sustainable learning. Uh, Yu Chiu Yu is also one of the um, authors who help in our company. He has published a lot of his books in our company. I met him once. When he was standing there, I want to talk to him. He was standing on the other side of the road. I talked to my driver. I called my driver with a mobile, and his driver doesn't know his doesn't know his the number of uh, Mr. Yu. Mr. Yu only know the number of his wife. So I asked the driver, "What is the number of his wife?" Well, I asked uh, Master Yu. You don't even go on to the uh, internet, you don't uh, have a carry your own mobile phone. He said, why not? From Einstein to Confucius, they don't have a mobile phone and they survive. They become the greatest learner and the greatest master of the world. So this is what I learned from him. Well, your feeling is uh, very stunning. I was very thought, it was such thought provoking and such enlightening. Well, what I just look for in life is a cup of coffee, a light, and a piece of paper, and a pen for me to read and write. I find myself, I find the inner part of myself. This is a ex experience of uh, digging into your own self and trying to rediscover your inner self. So that is why I say what you read and what you, uh, is the, so that the taste what who your, your friends are. It's not just browsing through the books and then the turning the pages, and that's all. It's different. You have to learn, you have to become absorbed, and then to review and go into the um, crust of the matter. When you really read a book in great depth, that will change the world, that will change yourself. It would encourage mutual understanding and also to make yourself a more embracive and more inclusive person, to be more empathetic to your, uh, to your community and your friends, and be able to include, to become more inclusive and enlightening and also become a more broad-minded person. So you know the world and you know your people and you understand more than yourself. So that is why you have to think from the viewpoint of the other people, from the perspective of your community. So that is why we always say believe in reading. So thank you very much, Ade. So thank you very much for such thought enlightening sharing with us. President of Dragonfly FM to come on stage to share with us his presentation, The Internet Podcast Industry. So let us uh, give him a big applaud, Mr. Zhong Wei Ming, the president of Dragonfly FM Company. Thank you very much. I'm really touched by Mr. Lin's enlightening speech to us. OK. Is the sound coming around? I try to fix. There are different kinds of emotions and feelings in the sound, in the audio uh, version. It gives you hope, gives you hope, gives you vision, gives you some aspirations. 
It gives you momentum and gives you a way of enlightening yourself. So noises and voices are important. So voice is not the only thing. The content, what is the content of the voices, of the song? The song doesn't mean anything. It takes a long time for you to read with your eyes and your heart as well. What I want to share with creativity is some observation about life and about objects and try to bring it back to my fellow members. Between men and men, we have inner level and in-depth sharing and communication. How can we share our feelings with our counterparts and then to make it become larger and larger to influence the whole world? This is important. Thank you very much. This is our own, not our own, not our promotion video, but something we make together with our friends, with our writers, and our uh, narrators. So today, the topic is on publishing. It's a very broad topic indeed. Perhaps you have got the wrong person, so I'm not on publishing. I'm doing podcasts, I'm doing vid audio visual shows, so it's got nothing to do with publishing. Well, I was being convinced at last because the organizer told me publishing is also something including sound, visual, music, and also podcast. In the beginning, a very, very early stage, when we started doing the digital publishing, we considered that in the olden days, people write on the stones, they even write on the ropes, on the cloth, and all kinds of very primitive um, uh, materials. And now we have got videotapes, and then songs also appear on the digital publishing, and also on videos, and now it's on podcast. But it all comes to the same concept. Content is most important. No matter what kind of sound you make and what kind of voices it uh, generates. So the concept is still the same. Indeed, when you try to bring your message across to the readers and narrators, you have to be careful about the content of your sounds and, all your, and also your all audience. So from the point of a podcast, I would like to start talking to you about what my presentation today. Sounds is something very different because it's also keeping your company, is uh, sort of uh, keeping you, giving you empathy. Whenever you do anything, sounds and music can keep you accompanied. It can be your good friend forever. If you start working, if you start walking, if you start doing other things, you can still listen to the sounds of the music. It can run away, even when you sleep, when you drive. So this is what we call a parallel time and a parallel space. It's on a world of monopolization by the sound and the music. This is not just parallel. It is audible and you cannot see it and therefore is very unique to monetize it. We've been doing this for seven years. But of course, seven years is nothing compared to how long the Hong Kong Book Fair has been running for the past more than three decades. Let me show you some numbers. These are numbers from China. The use case in China very different from those in the United States. 
Um, people in the United States listen to podcasts when they're at home, but in China, um, sometimes they are on the move, sometimes they are driving, sometimes they're in the bed. Um, because in China we live in a condo, whereas uh, in the United States most people live in a house. And in terms of sizes, we are very small. Uh, if we you put everything together in China, the number is smaller than one company in the United States. And therefore, we still have a long way to go in China. And I'm not talking about radio stations. Um, I'm only talking about podcast. We've been through three different stages, um, which started in 2011, where we had a platform radio. That's when mobile internet started to grow. At that time, we had so many people, so many people were flooding into the market. And we were pondering what kind of services and products to provide. And WeChat also started at that time. And so we began our platform radio in 2011. People did not listen to uh, radios when they were using a PC, but now that everybody has a mobile phone, and so it's easier for people to listen to radio online. And it is important for us to have the content. At that time, there was a lack of content, which is quite unlike what we have today. And so we transported traditional the content found in traditional uh, radios to online radio. We began to work with traditional radio stations, and we were doing this for five years, and now we have the largest number of programs and largest number of listeners in China. And traditional radio stations use our data to estimate the number of listeners. The second stage is the WeChat stage. WeChat was a new platform. And everybody could be a media company. By using um, WeChat, and so we have Dedao, we have Shidian, we have Kaishu. And starting from last year, we step into the AI stage. For instance, um, Alibaba, Baidu, Tencent are all being involved in this area. And Baidu also invested in us um, more than 300 million RMB.
And so we've been through a lot of changes. Um, currently, the competitors um, are Baidu, Alibaba, and Tencent. Um, in the past, we had to direct contact with the users, and now we are just the intermediary. I like to talk about our business model. Our business model is quite different from a publisher. Um, it, our business model hinges on the number of subscribers. Um, we have a menu for people to sub subscribe to. And what does the future hold? We are in the business. So what is the future hold? The settings are changing. Mr. Lin talked about um, the importance of mobile phone. Um, but in the future, we'll have uh, our household, the car, the outdoor. So there will be other scenarios for people to listen to podcast. Voice is very important for artificial intelligence. You don't have to search. Um, your bookshelves at home will be very different in the future. Whichever book that you want to read, you can ask Siri and Siri or in any voice activated um, technology will provide you. We are an integrated platform. Everybody sees the same thing, but in the future, we'll provide personalized content. And we are working on this. We are working on personalization. We'll have fiction. We have finance. We have history. We have a children's book. And so we are expanding the scenario. So we are one of the participants in this business. So, so what do I, we do? Uh, started from 2011. I like to share with you two uh, figures. Um, 12 million. We have 12 million active users. And 130 minutes. 100 minutes. 30 minutes is um, how much time these active users spend on our platform. Why is it? Because it's the mobility. When you are driving, when you are jogging, when you are having a shower, when you are doing house chores. And users are exposed to our content for a very long time, and therefore there is a lot of space for growth. As far as contents are concerned, they are also changing. In 2011, the only content that we provided was content from traditional radio stations when people are driving. is very simple. But nowadays it's different because on the mobile phone, we don't do a live broadcast anymore. And in 2012, we 
began to work with publishers.、Um, there are online books, and we、uh, hire voice actors to act out the、uh, fictions and stories. And starting from 2016, 2017, we have、uh, individual anchors. For instance, Jiang Xun. These are very famous、um, people. We began to produce content. It's not just transforming a book written by anyone、uh, into a, a podcast. Instead, we, there's a lot of work. And so this is how we develop. So in the first stage, we work with traditional radio stations, and therefore we hire a lot of people from radio stations, so that we were able to work with radio stations. In the second stage, we hire a lot of people from publishers. Because we had no idea how people run the business in the publisher, and in third stage we hire a lot of people from TV stations. Because these people they have high、uh, opportunity cost, and because they would have to choose,、uh, because we all. Have the same amount of、uh, time, and therefore they have to choose very carefully whether they write a book, whether they、uh, record a video clip or an audio clip. And so, in the second stage, we had、uh, tens of millions, and now we have much more subscribers. Because the quality of the content has been improving, and also it has to do with our partners, because our partners they have very high opportunity cost. So these are the three stages that we've been through. So these are the anchors. Um, some of them are from the entertainment industry. Some of them are writers. Some of them are authors. They come from different background. So, do we only provide a podcast program, or we can provide them different types of programs? For instance,、um, Mr. Jiang Xun, we have the exclusive right to his、uh, podcast. Um, if you listen to other、uh, platform, then they're all pirated. What else could we do for him? And perhaps we can organize seminars or different things.、Uh, we're doing all these different activities online. So this may be the future, and. It will be even more challenging. I just mentioned about the three stages of evolution. First, we start working with the radio people, and then we work with the、uh, publishing people. And now we need more partners as well. We need to have people who has brighter, who is all maybe be organizing and facilitating, and also to run their own business. So no matter in what kind of media or what kind of sector we can identify these uh, uh, talents and uh, these um, digital uh, KOLs will be able to work with them. We're happy to work with them to make the breakthroughs in the industry, in our programs, which we have never imagined before. That we can have such a high level of transport, try high level of a、uh, uh, visitage and patronage. So this is not exactly called publishing, but it's called semi or sort of para publishing. 
that is starting from 2017 already, and it is now making very large breakthroughs and having a lot of uh, patronage. At the beginning, we try to meet the needs of our audience because they have such a demand. They would like to have this kind of uh, special audio clips, which has never appeared in the market before. We have some kind of high level or top notch uh, intelligentsia and audience. And that is why we started to develop this kind of new content and new products. We tried to make a comparison with the audio clips to see what is the difference in terms of the ratio of acceptance. So for the content in the both area, there is some kind of overlapping content which is something very controversial compared with the previous exclusive content. What does it tell us? That means basically video clip and the audio clips are yeah, sort of categorically two different kinds of sectors. Uh, we started with Gao Song, who is a uh, breakthrough, who is a sort of vanguard in this area. He started telling stories in a narr narrative format he is actually doing some kind of audio clip at the beginning, but he started to change his direction, and it proved to be very popular and very successful. We spent a lot of time in trying to uh, get hold of him and trying to get in touch with him. He has got his Gao Xiao Song uh, channel as well. So the meaning is trying to cut off from his previous uh, channel, so he would like to start another new one. He has uh, become, he is now ranked number one in the podcast uh, uh, patronage. Uh, so the cost about $200 uh, for one cycle. So it's not exactly like a book, but it's already like a magazine, like an audio magazine that you can uh, order or you can make contribution. So you can subscribe this kind of uh, uh, audio magazine in your uh, mobile. For this year, we also have done another new, um, the new uh, product that is Jiang Xin. He is very good at literature. Previously, all his work is free of charge, and we do not charge anything. So it's all delivered on mobile, free of charge. But recently, we have tried to reformulate this kind of uh, um, mode of operation. And then we try to make it from uh, the uh, ancient languages to the modern languages. And then we have uh, done a special pilot scheme. We have identified 30 children coming from the grassroots level. And we also conduct a kind of pilot scheme well, they listen to the music, and then suddenly they stop crying. So this is a very good experiment, telling us sound the music has a special uh, in appeal and a special impact on human being, even for the crying little children. You just can imagine how we could develop this kind of uh, audio uh, clips. Jiang Xin has a very large audience and uh, followers. It's basically about 40 uh, ages and above, uh, who are literatis, who are the elite classes of the society. So he has got a special appeal to a very high level or a very uh, top quality kind of audience. Well, in the past, everything has been free of charge and also dispersed in different kinds of channels and uh, options. So it's not in a centralized or systematic presentation. So after we have reached an agreement with the author and the anchor, we started to make it into a more organized and centralized format. At the beginning, we are very worried that if we have to make it into a paid version, people have to subscribe and pay money for it. Would all these audience run away? Well, it proved to be on the contrary it becomes a very big success. All these programs with organized and systematic presentation and a coordinated approach started to attract a lot of audience and patronage. 
So that is to say, value carries its money if it's if it's of value added, if it's of high quality, people will be able to stay on, even they have to pay money and then subscribe for the audio clips. Until today, we have learned this lesson hard. So the anchors, they told us that they have this special kind of innovative idea and creative channels. So this kind of a situation occurs. We also discover that some of the other anchors, well, well, these are the popular ones. It's very meaningful. You can tell us that it's a very um, special curve, special sort of uh, learning curve. This is a very flat curve. These are the popular books, very flat curve. As for this one, which is of education value and of intellectual attraction, see the curve is very different. So when we do education and also to uh, learning um, audio clips, it's another different story. In my book, I have found the situation that the audio clips and also the um, learning or the education content become more harmonious when they, when they knit it together to become a sort of synchronized approach. And also we have collaborated with some uh, language teachers to develop some kind of um, uh, linguistic programs and courses for learning and also for enriching the quality of the standard of our young people. So, of course, when it started, we can consider that the patronage is very low. They have a few population, and the target group is not that much. It's about uh, less than about uh, uh, less less than about four uh, four hundred or five hundred thousand patronage. But the quality is very high, and also the target audience and the target and the raters are very limited. However, we think that this is a very meaningful project to start with. So the content and the, fun, fun, uh, and the foundation um, elements of the, of the linguistic program has been defined and formulated by the teachers, by the professional teachers. And they spend a lot of time in trying to refine and review the content. At the end, when the product was being delivered, the acceptance and also um, is very uh, encouraging. People like it very much. We talk to them. For me, uh, I think it is a kind of harmony between um, the intelligentsia and also the education world. Now we talk about children. We have tried to coordinate all the uh, programs by CCTV into a kind of uh, audio uh, clip, audio clip library for the young people, which is uh, initiated by two very important uh, anchors, that's a Yang Liu and Xiao Yan. And they also lined up with other very famous um, people to try, uh, very uh, celebrities to bring around a comprehensive program, which is providing some kind of uh, audio education reading material for our children. So previously, we do not have this kind of approach. So they just listen to it and then to, they run away. But now they adopted a very uh, lovely uh, audio sounds and together with the best narration and the storytelling technique to present some kind of um, ancient and also simple story books for our children. And this proved to be a great success. And these include some Disney uh, classic stories and also some ancient Chinese stories which has now been reviewed and revised into uh, some kind of simplified versions, very approachable to be accepted by our young people. So up to now, what we have learned, 
that is say we're going to make uh, some hybrid uh, product, which is an entirely new innovative product that is from the radio station to publishing to education. This is a long way. We have gone a long way. A lot of people say, what are you doing actually? And how big is your market when we do radio station? So it's quite, I mean, when we talk about advertising, it's uh, about uh, 20 billion RMB. It's a big amount, but not that big. If we try to eliminate all these traditional elements, we still got, we don't get any main, uh, a lot of very profit-making business. When we talk about publishing, all of the experts are sitting here. I'm not going to talk about or boost about the, um, mar uh, the profit marketing. So when we go venture into education, this is a blue ocean. This is an unlimited uh, market. But at least we come from a small market to a big market. This is a long way off. Even we have just contri con uh, contribute a small amount of the whole education market. This is already a very uh, satisfactory achievement for us all. Of course, we need to do a lot of work on that. We have to reformulate and review all the content, and then we have spent a lot of effort on integrating and coordinating all the programs. But we think this is worth a while because this is going to bring a change to the society and our young people. So for us as a sort of uh, AI or a IoT company, this is really something of great matter and something which is going to create a lot of pressure on us especially when we look at the multi-dimension aspect of our uh, um, industry, just like Ali, and also on the government funding uh, requirements and servicing uh, requirements and conditions and so on. For example, we collaborate with CCTV. So gradually, we're taking it one by one in incrementally and try to develop along this line. We want to cultivate a culture and also harmony in the long term as a kind of sustainable development. This is a broad overview about our development stages and what we have gone through. We have been always making a joke about ourselves. You have start from something which is uh, very un 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 untraditional. What we want to have uh, achieve in the end is that we want to make the children laugh and make the woman smile and make the man enlightened. So this is what we want to do, just a simple and simple target. Thank you very much. Thank you for such enlightening sharing. Well, Managing Director Asia Macro Hill Education to share with us thriving in the age of digitization and educational publishing. Mr. Zhang, please. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. I will use English so that our translator can work, can do extra work a bit from Mandarin to English, now English to Mandarin or Cantonese. Um, uh, OK, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Joseph. I'm from McGraw Hill. And I want to thank you, the Hong Kong uh, Publishing Federation and the uh, Hong Kong TDC for hosting uh, me, for coming over to share with you what is going on in the publishing industry. Um, thriving in the age of... Okay, let me introduce myself first. Um, I'm from uh, the publishing industry for close to 30 years now. So I've been covering uh, the Asia region for many years. I started off in uh, Asia, South, uh, uh, Southeast Asia, then later moved on to India. And then from India, actually I moved on to uh, work in China for 10 years. Then before the company posted me back into Singapore, covering the whole of uh, Asia region. So this is basically my background. Uh, thriving in the age of uh, digitization in education publishing. Uh, this is the topic today which I want to share with you all. Okay. Okay. 
technology. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the agenda is three things I want to, probably the three areas I want to touch on is education, the key development trends. So what are the trends that we see in terms of the uh, development of education? Then I move into publishing. Publishing, I will look at it as our challenges, the challenges that all of us face in the market. And the third one is I'm combining education, publishing into together and what are the four key to areas to thrive on. So this is to give you a background, uh, how these things, and also the publishers, basically like uh, McGraw-Hill and all the other publishers, what they are facing. Okay, educational publishing, if you look at it, okay, publish is to educate. So why do we publish? We publish is because we want to educate something. So it's the start of the, the beginning of uh, learning. The education of a key development trend I put into five uh, A's, uh, so I will start off with that. If you look at the, I just give you the five areas first, then I'll go through individual, so that at least you know why is it. Actualization, uh, how education evolved, you know, the 21st century learners, future jobs, and skills today. And then agile, that's what agile, agility, the how do educators help students learn today. Adaptive, how can learning be personalized? It's more personalized, more individualistic these days, right? Accessibility is what are the sources of education today. So it has changed uh, dramatically. And finally, affordability, how affordable is education today? Then if you look at actualization, if you look at the three areas that why do we actually go into you know, education, is because we want knowledge, we want skills, and finally, uh, to develop a character. So if you look carefully, a lot of the, 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 the third part is very much is going to be a very important uh, part of it because of technology, but we find that the character building is very important. So we find a lot of uh, schools are actually looking into this area. That's why they have a lot of activities uh, to build the character of the students. Then, okay, this one, if you look at the future jobs and the future skills. So the next one, uh, you see the top emerging areas now, they are data analytics scientists, AI, machine, general and operation manager. These are emerging into the thing, big data specialists. And of course, then they are also the declining ones. This actually will help to you to see that what's the future of, uh, you know, the landscape in 2022. And these are the skills. Just now, it was the job that is going to come up. Then these are the skills of 2022 that is coming up. The analytical thinking, innovation, that's what. Active learning and uh, you know, learning strategies, creativity, technology design and programming, critical thinking, you know, complex problem solving. So this will be, uh, the research uh, already worked out in all the countries in the world that uh, you know, this is the outlook. And agility, so that means how agile you are. So you see you have a lot of the tools that actually helps in the education. Uh, these tools are actually uh, unlike in the studies, but actually these are the helping you to become more uh, agile in, the, uh, in, in knowledge, in the workforce, in the education. Uh, for example, it's very interactive and it's immersive. So you observe these are the things that uh, actually a lot of the students these days are using outside of their course, outside of their class. And the next one, actually, this is the Googler who has, she actually started off many years ago, uh, pick up the computer in 86, and then she, when she was a student, and actually the teacher worked side by side with them in the first computer. And it doesn't change now, but however, the, the, the Google side, they have the applied digital skills, uh, you know, the, the department that helps students to prepare themselves uh, for this type of skills, and also the whether it's open system or Android, they have a separate uh, a that, that to help the students to train them in the digital skills. So this is another important component. And adaptive. So um, a lot of publishers these days are moving into adaptive. So if you look at adaptive, they can come in terms of uh, AR, augmented reality, gamification. You play the games to, to pick up your education. And then the personalized learning and uh, latest AI. I think AI is uh, in Asia. Is quite uh, is picking up a lot of investment in into the AI is coming up, and 
uh, the, I feel that in, in terms of AI uh, capability, some claim that the Asians are the one who are no longer copycats, but they are now trailblazer, they are leading the AI industry. And uh, I just give you an example of what is adaptive. So you have the core integrated digital con content, targeted instruction, student reflection, ownership of the thing, and data-driven decisions. So uh, we, if you, uh, I will not talk about other publishers, but they're looking at the, our company, McGraw-Hill. We are looking into Learn Smart. We're looking at smart book, adaptive learning text, where you can learn anywhere and you learn it using the learning analytics. So these are some of the things that we, we actually have developed uh, along with other publishers as well. And these are accessibility. So if you look carefully here, uh, traditional education, which all of you know, the most of the university like Harvard, you know, all the, the current university, even like Hong Kong U, are all classified under traditional. Then you have digital tools that is help with the learning. And of course, now you come out with a lot of this uh, area like Udemy, linking Coursera. So actually you can edit edX, they actually you can learn uh, through all this. And then like Coursera, they uh, even uh, provide uh, certificates for you if you complete the course. So these are the things that we see that is coming out. And uh, if you look at the field, it's actually widened. But we look at it as opportunity as well. And affordability. So in terms of affordability, I think a lot of you will know that the education has gone up tremendously. You know, in terms of as compared to the wages, if you are graduating, uh, if you are a student graduating 30 years ago, and you start to look for a job, you know, to, to, to cover what you have paid in your education, it is uh, it's not as, as high as now. Because if you look at the price of college, increases almost eight times faster than wages and the student loans are also increasing. So that also push uh, a lot of other areas uh, into other students into picking up uh, education, alternative education elsewhere. So I'm going back to this. So these are the five areas that I, I've just said, and then basically uh, these are the areas that we, we see the, the development of the education trend. The next one is uh, publishing now. This one comes to most of us publishers now the publishing business challenges that uh, most of the publishers are facing, not only in Asia, but uh, throughout the world, I presume, is almost the same. Okay, uh, re redefining industry. Just now I did mention that the, you know, the education publishing house, which are all the used to the major publishers, they're into this area. And of course, then we come into the brand, you know, even like Harvard uh, Business Press, or Harvard, However, the even press that we, uh, Mr. Lin actually have represent, they also starting to publish books, but based on their brand, their university, but not uh, on the company, you know. But they basically have that is coming up. But even then, we see all these are also coming up. Bain, you know, their consultant, AWS, you know, Microsoft, they are also coming up with the publishing area as well. And this also explained to you there are more uh, people in the field, but very specific. So print challenges, you know, we also have a face with print challenges. The revenue is slowing down. I guess most of you know uh, the libraries are not buying. Uh, they have a budget cut. Not cutting the budget totally, but they are purchasing it differently. So now what they do is they will actually split it for subscription or they buy journals, they buy other areas because of the space, because of technology, and because of how students read nowadays. If you go into a, a library, uh, I've been to a couple of libraries in, the, in, in different countries, and you see students are holding laptops, they are putting up in the library, but they're not sitting down reading the thick book. Now there's the changes in terms of the habit, the how they actually uh, read in, in that sense. So librarians are forced to do that as well. Uh, very interesting, I want to tell you about uh, what's happening in Singapore. In Singapore, the library, for example, they have a budget. So what they do is they also now uh, purchase in quotes. That means to give it to the students to take a certain course. If it is accounting, if they were to do accounting, the, the publishers or the um, uh, ad tech uh, companies will actually provide studies, uh, quotes for them to learn, it be adaptive. And you see librarians are buying quotes, you know, they're buying 500, 600 for the students to take the course. 
So you see the library budget also have uh, shifted. And then if you look at the rising operating costs, as the number of print, I think all of you know, as the number of print quantity goes down, the cost goes up. So, so that, that causes the uh, rising operating costs. Of course, then we'll come towards the um, warehousing. It's no longer that cheap. So if the cost that you publish, and if the volume don't warrant it, and you have to write off, so you basically will suffer another area of uh, the, the cost uh, effect on your, 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 your margin especially. So these are the, the, the challenges that most of the, publishing, uh, the publishers are facing. And so, so now what are the solutions? Some actually go into POD, the print on demand. So they go into e-books. Uh, these are the things that they, they, they go. Okay, the next is the digital transition. So you move now, you move from print and to digital. So what it happened? So of course, then you will find that there's a gradual revenue growth. So when you have a gradual re revenue growth, but it doesn't equate with what you are doing now. So if you sell maybe $500,000 this month, but the e-books or the transition of the gradual revenue may not be that amount. It is slowly coming up, but not at that level yet. But in terms of percentage, you start to say how many percent growth. I have 100% growth, but it's from zero to 100 you say it's 100% growth, but does that cover your cost? So the dilemma of publishers now is that, what I'm going to do with it, should I go ahead with it, or should I not go ahead with it? So if you talk about percentage growth, it's very high, but in terms of revenue growth, it's not there to help you. So the dilemma is causing a lot of publishers into that, that um, situation. And high cost, is it cheap to maintain technology, infrastructure, support, implementation, so you need another group of people that comes in to, to manage it. So we are always feeling a bit, uh, you know, we go through a different phase now. So, so what do we do? You know, these are some of the challenges that most of the publishers have to face. So educational publishing. So this, I would want to actually spread, uh, I mean, uh, talk further on this. There are four key areas to thrive, but whether to thrive or not, it depends uh, on the company itself. So actually what we do is we look at the um, McKinsey Three Horizon. So that represents uh, uh, what we are doing now. If you look at this, this area, we are actually, if traditional publishers, we are actually here. So we look at our traditional publishing, but at one point, this will actually will go down. So how fast it go down, it depends on how you react. If let's say a publisher say that I'm not going to do anything, I'm going to cut off now, then I think uh, if they already have, have this connection here, then it's okay, but if they don't have this, they will start to go down and depend how fast they go down. So, so these are some of the, the first, uh, uh, the horizon that we, we look at, and that comes with uh, a lot of the managers or a lot of the uh, key people who run it will be very on a manager mode. That means they manage that uh, tradition because it has been there for many years. How we operate is already there. So you are managing the situation. Then you come to two. So the reform. So now reform is that you do print and you do digital. So when you do both, actually it's blended. So when we come to do the blended, and then the group of people that actually run these emerging businesses going into different like library now, they want to buy quotes. They want to buy ebook. Ebook is not. I mean, if you, if you go and get uh, technology and and the, the the print book together, so you're actually going these two stages. When you're going through that, you will basically will have a group of uh, managers that needs to be very entrepreneurial. That means they are willing to try out new things and go for it. So that is the type that you will come under this area. So it is important that you have this. Then you come to this. And the third one is transformation. Transformation will be platforms, digital, something different, be it uh, sound, audio, or be it um, tablet. So it's not about anything, but as a publisher, I did many years ago, I, I put a, a, a PowerPoint up in Taiwan, actually. So I said, uh, content is king. And then uh, one of the, um, another speaker said, no. Uh, channel is king, so I think, so it is true in the first place. So who is it? 
But I think you know, uh, this is something that uh, we look at it as a publisher. The content may be a king, but you don't have a channel, you're dead. But the people who have channel, but you don't have content, you also can't make it. So, so that is how we look at it. So it's very interesting on the third phase. But a lot of the publishers that I, you know, I, I realize, they jump too fast. So they come here, but they see all these things here. They start to cut this one and start to move here. So that's where you have a period of not growth here. So you, 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 you kind of like, you know, you just have to be careful that whether you have this, this to step up. So a lot of them, they don't have this one. And coming from Mr. Chung, it's like this area, the transformation is here, that there he is actually looking at this part. So whether we can come and meet together in this area will be... An, so this is a very interesting um, uh, sort of the horizon will be picked up from, from the publishing, uh, the way you look at it. Uh, it took me 30 years to actually look at this uh, and carefully and say, you know, uh, are we? Because uh, as publisher, we are always driven by what we need to do. And we are always, when we are here, we start to panic, but it's going to come down. So should we come to here? Because we see a lot of noise here. So what they are doing online, subscription, making money, and a lot of these VCs are pumping a lot of money into this area. So I suggest that actually be careful. You need to have this gap to be able for you to lead up to here itself. Okay. So this is how I just uh, give you a, just an example how, how it looks like. So it, this is the print, and then these are the connect, smart book, access medical. So these are the blended. So you go into the second horizon, and then there's the future business, technology driven, and all these things. So I guess the, the way is that you, you have a content, you, you, you just use your content to, to actually move uh, to different uh, area uh, or what it is needed. So you don't limit yourself, it's a print, that is the book itself. It is just a media, so a medium of uh, instruction, I guess. So now, uh, Education publisher, I heard, I think two, three days ago, you heard about Pearson uh, face out the print of the textbook. And he, you know, um, Mr. Fallon actually said that for the Netflix, he added, for the next week and Spotify generation, they expect to rent, not own. So uh, this is the beginning, that's how the publishers are changing. So they are actually looking into uh, more on the Spotify, next, Netflix. It's something that we, we can discuss because when I, received this message two, three days ago, I start asking different people from the industry, I say, what do you think? So some are positive, some are negative. So actually, it all remain on the mindset of each, it tells the mindset of each individual how they take it. So the response will be different. So like Amazon, many years ago, when it started off online, uh, a lot of other publishers felt that would they survive, but they did not make any money for a number of years before now, they are one of the greatest in terms of in terms, uh, online uh, purchasing. Okay, uh, the mind shift. So I think I guess the next one is the the, the 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 trend will be the mind shift, you know, from product to services. If you look at this product to services, static to solution, product success to company success. So this changes if you are into the blended. So these are the things you have to start to think about. So even a lot of companies when they are doing, they have to change their own internal company people and the structure as well to come to this or they bring this in together. It's no longer uh, into the print mode, but you have to have a blended of this. So, okay, the lever leverage, how you're going to do next? I think it's best that you, a lot of companies, they leverage either some, some companies actually they go alone. They think that they can actually go through the whole three horizon alone. But uh, looking at it, collaboration is the best mode actually to, to work on things. You know, the, the publishing, the word here, the publishing market is no longer a better ground between print and digital. Instead, it is becoming an ecosystem that embraces all format and increasing influence by consumer. So this is the, 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 the thing is, uh, I mean, sort of the demand is coming up. But the good news from this uh, report that we have, the Asia Pacific is growing, but don't be deceived, it's only about less than 2%. So it's 1.0% of it growth. So it looks, uh, you know, that's promising if you compare to the world. So once you collaborate, you know, you work with partners, uh, then, um, like for example, Mr. Chung, then I will say that we want to work together. So if we work together, there's a synergy. He got a market, uh, he got a market. He already have the technology, and we have the content, and we can actually join together. And Mr. Lin as well, you know, when we look at it, how we, 
together we change our, our content and then how to ta target the Taiwan market. So this is what I mean by collaboration where we work together. So uh, in collaboration, the most important thing is trust. I think at the end of the day, if you don't trust each other, uh, we can talk about collaboration, but at the back of our mind, we, it's never a collaboration. You know? so, so if you don't have the first thing on trust, I guess uh, nothing works uh, to begin with. I've never seen any company successful for many years without even trusting each other. And if you look at the, uh, this other, I think I just put it out for you, is that the expectation always rise in terms of technology. You, you, you start off with something, blockchain, all the way people expect you grow up. Then the VCs, you know, the venture capitalists, the VCs all will come in and they will start to actually uh, pump in money into this. And after that, it will go down. But looking at it now, it is coming to stabilize already, which you can see the trend itself, that there are certain, but however, then new technology come in. AI is coming in, so AI for education is also like, I've, I've seen some kindergartens, they slowly will not use teachers at all, but they are using uh, augmented reality AI, facial recognition. So these are the changes that is uh, coming up, but due to cost, but while you cut costs on this, you increase costs on the others as well. Okay, this is something that I think uh, we talk too much on the business. I, I feel that there are certain areas how uh, a company can be successful if you are in a publishing or in any other company. So I think even with your partners, if you are working with a collaboration partners, I think there's an old saying in Chinese, "先做人后做事 So you, you start off with that and then you won't go wrong. So for, for the way I look at it is you, you don't build a business, you build people and then people build your business. Which in a way, you know, uh, I, have a, I have a strong team, I will say that, that actually, you know, we, we build them up and they will build the business for you. Okay, and the last one, I think this one, uh, you have to uh, sort of like, like see it through and read it. it to the literate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn and relearn. So the thing is learn, unlearn and relearn, as you know, that's what we'll be making uh, whatever it is, the team or the business to be successful. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. John, for the valuable speech. Please be seated. Thank you all, all three honorable speakers for, for sharing. So here comes the panel discussion section. May we now invite Mr. Edmund Chen, Associate Director of City University of Hong Kong Press, and our three speakers of today, Mr. Lin, Mr. Zhong, and Mr. Chong, to join us on stage, please. 现在我们有请香港城市大学出版社副社长陈家阳先生以及今天三位的演讲嘉宾林社长及钟先生张。and now comes the Q&A session. I would like to invite our moderator, Mr. Edmund Chen, who is the Associate Director of City University of Hong Kong Press, to come up to be our moderator. Would all the three guest speakers also come up to the stage to get set for the Q&A session? Yes, we will be able to kick off very soon. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good, uh, good afternoon to all of you here. So I'm sure you agree with me that the three speakers are very thought enlightening and also very mind opening. Well, the buffet has been, has a, a history of 30 years already. But to me, the QA session is always a fresh experience for all of us, uh, for all of us, because every time it brings along new dimensions and new challenges and new outlooks for all of us. So, if you have any questions or any comments to make, would you please raise your hand, and our um, our staff will hand over the microphone to you. I have only one task, that is to keep the time. I have to complete all the Q&A session in by 4.30. But after listening to the three very stunning speeches, I'm very sure that it's difficult to keep the time at 4.30. Especially on Mr. Teen, who gave us a very vivid description about his story of upgrowing 
his development stages and so on. And also uh, Mr. Jong, he is not a publisher at the beginning. He is in the financial sector, right? So when he started doing the business, he is already uh, an outsider. He's, and then he started with another approach and to create podcasts as a very big uh, vanguard in the industry. <sighs> well, talking about my history, uh, I'm coming from the finance world. I come from the Shanghai. I uh, come from uh, the Shanghai uh, Jiao Tong uh, University. I'm uh, getting my EFBA from the Changjiang Business School in financial studies, and I engage in all kinds of uh, uh, commodities uh, trading, such as uh, petrol product, consumers, and so on. I'm focused basically on internet, IoT, and so on. And actually, one of the first batches of uh, professionals who engage in this area. Subsequently, I went to Beijing to do the PVC market, which is a very popular uh, topic that time. I work uh, in relation to the Ministry of Finance. Uh, we are engaged in this kind of uh, PE related and also on the cultural uh, in initiatives and in, in, in innovative industries. And also about uh, China uh, uh, publishing portfolio. This is my, this is where I started w uh, with. And, uh, Yes, I actually do the China Universal Asset Management and CICC, and also an analyst in the cultural and communications, equity research, and so on. Well, it's, it, it all comes by, by it, I actually by chance that I bump into this field of uh, a cultural innovation, and accidentally. One of the important reasons is because is my understanding about the vision and the, and the vitality of this sector, vitality of the cultural and communication sector. And it's about the uh, paid services in the cultural and communication industries. But more importantly, there is a more important reason that is because of the attractiveness of AI and IoT and it has great bearing on education and also communications. I think these are very important factors that we should not overlook. In a big wave, in a big era, we could always see the emergence of a, a wonderful corporate. So things are like that. I, I'm, I'm still on my way to in my developmental stages in order to reach my target. I'm still learning along my way. I believe that so long as we contribute to this sector, then that's going to be very uh, fruitful uh, returns and rewards to us. And culture and publishing is also as uh, some kind of targeting and sort of leading industries in, in trying to bring about a new dimension in the next era of education. In terms of uh, content, of course, we never enough. We will always try to improve and. Uh, make it more per perfect and make it more comprehensive. We hope that we can have more subscribers so that everybody can enjoy the values of our content. The reason why I wanted him to tell us his stories because I want to underscore the fact that outstanding publishers do not always begin with publishing. In the past, a lot of people started with literature. For instance, Mr. Lin is because he really enjoyed reading. And for some reason, he became involved in publishing. Now that you look back, do you think it's odd that you're involved in the publishing? So Mr. Zhong mentioned that 
he really respects the internet, and I feel good about what he said because we fear about internet. Internet has an enormous impact on publishers, so print books. May suffer a lot. When I was in polytechnic, I was reading a book which talks about the importance of writing,、um, because when you write, you can share your thoughts and experience with others. And so, I I write and I submit, but I always get rejected. And I've been the Company for thirty years, and nobody has written about me. And then I realized that my dreams have been fulfilled because my、uh, stories are not as exciting as、uh, Morris Zhang,、uh, the guy who founded、uh, TSMC. And so, in the middle of the night, I realize that I am just a worker in the publishing industry. I am also involved in、uh, transferring the knowledge, the experience to others. English or Mandarin is okay. Is it? Yeah, yeah. I guess everyone wants to know more about you. 我自己就是找工作，就走到这出版社。I was looking for a job, and I went to.、Uh, I attended an interview at a publisher, and after thirty years in the industry, I realized that this is a very important industry because we help students to be educated. So. We are here to talk about the innovation and growth of publisher, and I've spent some time to encourage you to、uh, think about questions.、Uh, there is a lady who wanted to answer a question. Good afternoon. I thought that your presentations were very exciting. I am living in Hong Kong. I'm originally from mainland China. I was in publishing industry, and I was also a publishing major. I'm an internet celebrity. I have a few hundred thousands of followers. And so, I've been in the、uh, publishing industry, and now I. Have、uh, internet exposure, so my question may be very vague. Just now, Mr. Lin mentioned that Yu Chuyu doesn't use a cell phone, and Bi Fei Yu doesn't use a cell phone. He did not use a cell phone, and he now uses. A cell phone. He also teaches people how to write. Maybe it has to do with his agent. And I felt sad because Bi Fei Yu is teaching people how to write. I'm also involved in e-commerce. Um, I 
I cannot teach people. I can't charge people. And a lot of asking, a lot of people asking me, what does the market want? So, how can we maintain a knowledge platform, a paid knowledge platform? I have also published a book. Before I became a internet celebrity, well, maybe it has to do with the content. Um, perhaps Mr. Zhong, because you have a lot of KOLs. Could you introduce? how you operate your platform. So what is your core question? Because you were not very clear. I do not understand. Well, um, there's a lot of KOL, um, and there are other low-level KOLs, so how does the platform maintain? Well, for a platform, we also have to survive. On the one hand, we keep close connection with KOL. On the other hand, we also attach great importance to the data. We get rid of uh, those who don't have very good number. Um, we also spend a lot of time and resources on children's re resource uh, programs. We focus on children's. Um, programs and we focus because we focus on uh, children's program therefore we have specific programs and you said that you feel sad because a very famous writer is teaching kids how to write uh, composition well um, for us, I think this is a very huge market because uh, education, language education especially, um, there is a huge demand for Chinese language education because there's been a reform of education in China. Um, perhaps they, it will turn into a star product very soon. How do we target a star product? Well, it all boils down to the data. And also we want to nurture and empower emerging KOLs. Um, we want them to match the content uh, with our platform. Different platform have different positioning because they know the the users and subscribers, and therefore they know which uh, area uh, could meet the need of the subscribers. You mentioned. Uh, genders and, and kids, and stuff like that. And for emerging KOLs, um, you have a few hundred thousand followers, then you are a major player. 
um, and we can't really make much money because we have to. If we were to work with you, then we we have to pay you a lot.、Um, but for emerging KOLs, they don't have too many、uh, followers yet, and yet we can、um, have a higher margin because we don't have to pay them too much just yet. And the potential is huge if we work with emerging KOLs. I'm just talking about this from the、uh, perspective of the ecology. And this is really an ecology, and an ecology. Then you have the front end, you have the mid end, and you. Um, you have the back end, and we want people to progress. We want people to elevate and improve. This is my understanding. I don't know if my answer.、Uh, I'm not sure if you're、uh, happy with my answer. I have a question. Because you were migrating from a traditional、uh, radio station into working with publishers, and now you are working with KOLs. And so, are you spending more and more resources on building KOL, or you have a set percentage that you spent on、uh, KOLs? For the very、uh, A-list KOLs,、uh, it really depends on which year we are talking about.、Um, in 2017 to 2018, we spent a large percentage of our uh, revenue uh, because we had to build our brand, but. Uh, this year we are spending less, and so for the past two years we were spending.、Uh, people were burning money, and after two years, major platforms and players are going steady. The total input is also increasing, but it doesn't increase as significantly as. It did in the past. Good afternoon. I am from Taiwan. I've learned a lot from the different speakers. We know that content is king for publishing industry. How do you see the value? Of human beings, so in the knowledge economy, where does the value of men sit? So, can you answer his question? Editor is very important、um, because they can improve the quality of the content. The editor actually dictates the quality. Well, they actually the two in one. Even we face to face with each other, we have to know that they have interested in doing it. If they are forced to do that, or if they have other、uh, other uh, ulterior motives to do it, the out the outcome will be different because they won't do it with a heart and with their own、um, commitment. This is important for the、uh, development of a company. How about you,、uh, Master Lin? To put it this way, you are not talking about just writing on a, a piece of paper. It's a blank piece of paper. Well, even it's a blank piece of paper. You can still go to the bank to get the loans, and you can sell it for money. 
and whether it carries a, a dollar sign, whether it is of value to us. We have to look at it this way. I mean, the people who work in this industry for a long time keep on telling us that. Even when the books stop selling, your money becomes paper. Well, if the book is selling, the paper will become money. So this is a two-in-one uh, doctrine, as been well explained by Mr. Zhang. In the Typhoon, they did very well in the dumplings. Well, the same, the same piece of uh, flour, the same piece of pastry, and the same piece of meat. But different cokes and different chefs make uh, magic out of it. So the, some of the readers can read the gist of the book and really uh, can know the content and appreciate the value. And the aesthetics of the book is different. For our company, we did a lot of transla translated versions of uh, uh, foreign um, books and, uh, and, and magazines. But the translated versions actually carry different kinds of meaning to different people. Well, we have heaps of uh, books and our, and our at home that, 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 that implies that we have heaps of money. Well, this is it. Why do I come today? This is a Ye Fei Zhu. She asked me to come here. Say, because he keep telling me the theme is about innovation and publishing. So it's difficult for us to reach the sky just within one day. The most important is that the uh, domain of publishing has to be more uh, accommodative, to be more inclusive. So it's become a domain or may become a, a vessel for able to uh, absorb or able to uh, change the value of some static elements into some dynamic elements. So this is one way to realize the value within the whole industry and the whole sector. We have another hand raising at the back. My name is uh, Sonia Santiago. I am from the Philippines. We are, uh, I'm connected with a publishing company, Direx Publishing, which is the one of the largest education and materials provider in the Philippines. I worked before with McGraw Hill. We started McGraw Hill in the it's Philippines. Previous working for you. Yeah. With my okay. boss, who came from the Department of Education, and I was his assistant as a resident manager and marketing. We cover uh, a lot of uh, territories because McGraw Hill started in the Philippines covering several areas in Asia. We also covered India at the time when it is merged with Tata McGraw Hill. Now, my question is, we are a member of the International Publishers Association, IPA in short, and we are a, an active member of one of the categories committee, which is the Educational Publishing Forum. We were informed lately by IPA, uh, which I know will shock some of you here who are involved in educational publishing industry, is that McGraw-Hill and Cengage will merge in early 2020. Mm -hmm. I would like to know whether this is true or not, because this is an official newsletter coming from the IPA. That's my first question. Second question is, we received another announcement from the IPA that Pearson Education will be converting all its textbook into digital. Is it true? Mm -hmm. So that's my second question. May I throw this question to Mr. Joseph Chong, who is my associate now? Yeah. But well, I'm actually, no thank you. This is, these two questions are very actually um, up to date because I guess if you're working in this publishing industry, you know that um, everything going digitized and um, very likely that uh, companies will merge 
and then to look for the best opportunity. So I guess from that angle, it's not about Sengage and McGraw Hill, but it's, it's a trend, and we are talking about the trend. So from that angle, I guess um, Joseph could um, shed some light on that. Thank you. Oh yeah, um, Sister Sonia. Yes, uh, it's true that I mean you hear what in the news. I, is, I guess it's not only in the uh, Philippine Publisher Association, but it's also out in the worldwide news that uh, there is a merger. Uh, if you look at the merger, it is a good uh, synergy, like I mentioned. So the synergy is that, take for example, uh, McGraw-Hill, we have strong in the school uh, area, and Sengage, they have a very strong in terms of the ELT. So that is a strong uh, kind of a synergy for both of us. In terms of higher education, uh, we have also the higher education areas that we are strong in. At uh, Sengage, they also have an area that we can merge together. So it covers the first year, second year, and third year. So, so from that angle, it is uh, a, a synergy. Uh, however, having said that, um, the uh, Department of Justice will have to approve this. So it's going through the uh, process. So meanwhile, everything is uh, business as usual. So we still compete in the market. We still go into the universities to, to visit the lecturers and also working on that. So until it is approved, I don't think there's any uh, anything uh, firm, but this is something that is already out, it's true. And uh, your second question about the um, Pearson, it is not new. I think Pearson always has been going towards digital. In, f in fact, they have been forefronter in, in this area, moving into digital. So the announcement coming out on the digital is not not something that most of the publishers are actually uh, targeting it towards. So as to whether uh, in terms of stopping the print or not stopping the print, uh, we basically, uh, it, it trickles down. If any countries that look at it, because there are certain countries that are still uh, using print, but moving towards is just that how fast you want to move into the digital. So uh, probably from the Pearson perspective that they want to you know, push forward this as fast as possible, that means they will be doing a lot of digital uh, work. And which is once uh, the digital work allow you to do it real time. That means you don't have to wait a number of years to actually, everything changes. If it's digital, I can actually insert and change immediately. So which is, uh, which is something that we can do. But last time probably uh, when we don't have the internet, all these things, we don't have all the um, you know, information on the fingertips. I guess that we will have to rely on the print to, to come together on that area. In this topic, I just want to think about the number of people who are talking about the print, right? But I still see a lot of small companies. I understand that yeah, you talk about Himalaya, but I understand that there are a lot of smaller companies that are back still pursuing along that path. What are your views? about this question. You can, you can be frank and open here. Yeah, these are all our publishing on counterparts. Just now, when I talk about this sector, the printing, comp the, the printing sector has now faced three different scenarios, one, two, three. This is uh, what the Himalaya faced. The, the, the first round is already sort of finished. We're now going to the second round and the second, the third round of our further development stages. For Wei Xing, they have also uh, been very important. They are a different system and a different kind of uh, uh, sector, which is not directly related to um, publishing. However, they are still the media sector. All these companies, they, are, they have grown a lot to become big corporates. And of course, are there new stars shooting up? I'm sure there would be. However, these new emerging stars, they might be in different sectors and different scenarios. So within this uh, ecology, I'm sure that there will be a rising or emerging corporates coming in. Number the first one for ABG in this battlefield 
if you want to develop a new platform or a, a, a small platform. I am not quite sure you have a high chances of success because unless you have a completely new idea or new, a, new, a new initiative, the second battlefield is within a wasting domain. That means you have to be very precise, you have to be very comprehensive and definite. Number three, I'm talking about the third field is talking about AI, about automobiles, about this application of uh, some uh, high technology, high tech technology. Within this scenario, if you can focus on some particular area, just as people have mentioned just now about uh, tourists, tourist scenarios that might be able to uh, to develop a new platform. If you can say APP, I'm not quite sure there is high opportunity that you could be, become successful. For we seeing within the current uh, vertical uh, domain, there might be chances, but it's very hard. So the, on the third area, if within a new scenario, you might be able to break into a new field and have some kind of breakthrough. So for us, so it is not implying that the battle is over, but however, the heat and the fire is still moving on from one area to another area or from one level to a more a sophisticated and a more um, compl complicated level. So this will changes in accordance with the scenario and with the per personality and also the uh, domain of the content. So I come from the Zhonghua Guoji, Zhonghua International Media Company, and engaging in education publishing. Well, I think publishing, publishing is going to be more important in trying to uh, promote education and also to bring a new dimension to education in the future era. My question is, how can we make use, best use of the um, commercial or market-oriented approach or tools in order to make education still uh, a valuable asset within our own domain and the horizon? So could you please share with us about your views and your experiences on this area? How could we realize our education targets and the, also the cultural and communication targets, but still making use of the commercial and marketing tools? Well, I think actually Mr. Lin has been telling us con continuously that uh, the Tianxia, that is the Commonwealth Publishing Group, is not just focusing firstly on market and profits, but they also look at the value and the dimension of the um, values as the most important thing. Well, people engaged in this sector has been telling me that it's very hard to work in the publishing field. Well. You have to turn your money into the paper, it's easy, but you have to turn the paper into money, that's difficult. I have been telling people that for the publishing sector, a lot of us engage in the editorial work. Well, most of them are very highly educated and very highly qualified, and they're very powerful in trying to dictate the marketing and the, and, and the promotion and everything to make money is the most important um, objective. And those who are in marketing, they are not business people. They are not good at math. I'm not talking about very complicated, but instead, for instance, uh, how much copyright fee is required? How do you do pricing? How do you look at the logistics? There's a very common sense math. I don't, I'm not highly educated. We have somebody who is a math major from university, but his math is not very good when it comes to business. For instance, Mr. 
Jiang Xun. And it costs a lot to purchase his IP. And so in order to be a publisher, you need to have a model for growth and for innovation. And if you publish a book and yet this book is in the warehouse, then you can't really make money. Um, if you want the content to be to have an impact, then you need somebody to purchase it. I like to see what Joseph has to say. Let me share with you a joke. In the publishing industry, we all have a PhD: packing, handling, and delivery. You need to be passionate about publishing, or else you can't really survive. We talked about how to publish a good book. And if we see a student who becomes successful, and we are very happy, Mr. Zhong, he has a degree in finance, and yet you are now in publishing. Let's see what he has to say. Well, you can have a passion and become a very successful. Business person, um, any business that can become successful is because the owner is very passionate. So perhaps the question we should ask is, how do we balance passion and business? Well, first you need to have a very good. Team, you need to have very good capabilities. For instance, Alibaba and Google—they are full of passion. But in addition to having the passion, they also have the business capabilities, so that they could continue their passion. If they do not have the business capabilities. Then the passion cannot go on. This is in line with what、um, Joseph said. Any other questions? Good afternoon. I'm from、uh, Guangzhou. I am an editor, and I've edited a book. My question is: How do you promote a good book to the world? Your book is in Chinese. My book is in Chinese. Maybe you need to translate it into English first. Well, I'll be more specific. This book was written by a writer who spent ten years writing this book, and he's selling the second edition. And on the fifteenth of、uh, March, he also published、uh, an English edition with Rowledge. Um, not too many people are aware of this book. Thank you. Let me rephrase her question. As an editor, if you identify a very good book, how do you promote it to the market? 
you are all very uh, experienced. Why don't you answer this lady's questions? I'm sure you've identified books with very good potential. How do you promote it? The management of mobile marketing. Uh, well, he has to sell his book well in order to prove his points. Because if he can't do that, then nobody is going to buy his book. What a book sells? Maybe is predestinate. There is only so much that you can spend a lot of work on. We have ex we have uh, professional people uh, to look at the marketing channel, the background of the writer, etc. But there's still a lot of uncertainties, and so maybe there is a very good book, and then we as publisher we trash it. We don't really want this to happen, and so we want to promote this book. And I've asked myself the same question for the past thirty years. Every day I ask, how come this book doesn't sell as much as I expected? I so books for only three thousand copies. I can only share with you or ex. Successful story, uh, success stories, because I was given only thirty minutes. Um, Thomas Freeman wrote, "Thank you for being late." Pessimistic people they predict. predict. Uh, things more accurately, but optimistic people would change the world. So we all want you to be more optimistic. Um, I'm from London, and um, I found and I find this discussion really fascinating. Um, I'm from the other side of the publishing world, so I'm a creative, and I. I'm sitting here feeling like our role as content provider um, may be in jeopardy mm -hmm. because the industry is in jeopardy. It sounds yeah, like the shrinking. industry is in yeah. jeopardy. Yeah. Um, so the, I have two questions also. My first question is, do the writers now, I, I mean, I write fiction, so do the writers of fiction now need to look at another career because <laughs> the publishing industry is no longer able to sustain them. Mm -hmm. And two, um, I, I, cr I associate innovation with creativity. And so now that the digital, so now that the digital age is taking over and publishing is becoming more digital, mm -hmm. um, the publishing world is no longer in competition with its own Publishers. It's not right. just about. It's not publishers. It's against not publishers. just about publishers. It's now about um, people who who people who are in the digital industry. So maybe two, three, maybe ten years from now, Apple will be become publishers of of. They are actually. <laughs> oh, you see. So I guess that there's another momentum to this to this forum that I kind of need to feel a little bit more comfortable about. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> can somebody just. Maybe make me feel a little bit more secure in my present world okay, as a writer. Okay, thank you. Just uh, quickly repeat his, her question in 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 Chinese in English. She is a writer, um, so she's concerned about the future, and she's also has a second question, which is about the platform. Because he's with Macro Hill, so I guess he met a lot of. You guys, you know, as authors. Thank you. Yeah, um, yeah. To answer your question, um, you see, the thing is that from the publishing perspective, like I just said just now, uh, I think this, uh, we are going through a lot of changes. So that means if you look at the content itself, uh, how do you look at the content? You know, if you if you box yourself to look at it, it's only a print mode. Then, of course, you know, before you can do anything, you are actually 
putting yourself into that mode already, which is, which is actually limiting yourself. But you mentioned you're on creativity, but you will look at uh, what I've said, you know, the future, even with AI and all these things, you, you can't replace human. So it actually needs creativity. And if you're producing something, the content is important. There will be people who want to do it, to read it, but the new millennial will read it differently from the different, uh, you know, uh, I mean, my age. Uh, they will go into mobile, they will go into different, but content which you produce through your creativity, it will be always exist. So if you look at all the publishers, they are also, I mean, just some, if you look at it, they have a few different areas are developing, and some are very specific, very targeted. You know, for your friction, you, you know, if you look at it, uh, Harry Potter won't survive you if you look at it, she won't even write. But, you know, her book sells very well. And I, I guess it's how you do it. And open up your mind. Don't limit all, it's just it's publishing, it's just print. But it can be, you know, working together as audio and things like that. But there must be some creativity in, in, in put into that, which, which is the content and how... Uh, attractive it is, how you know how exciting it, it gets. You know, I hope I answer your question. Yeah, on, on the contrary, I think um, as a, a creator of contents, that you got ample opportunity because you got FM, uh, Dragonfly. You know, they got the platform for you so that you could just translate whatever contents and let them introduce to a billion of potential uh, customers. And also, you got uh, uh, Lean. You know. He has lots of brilliant ideas, you know, turning your contents into cash, I guess. Okay. Yeah, okay. So much more secure now. <laughs> very good, very good. <laughs> uh, uh, well, 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 just one more question. I, I guess if you, if you move into the publishing world, uh, I guess, I mean, you, you, you work in, in terms of what you want to share in, for information. It's not, much, not like you wanted to, you know, uh, I'll go into property, I'm going to selling um, drinks, hard liquor. You make your money. But actually, the satisfactions come from both the sharing of content and actually the passion of it. I, I guess if you have that, again, that drives it beside monetary terms. I have failed myself because I can only end on time. So once again, thank you for participating. We'll see you next year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chen and our speakers for the fruitful sharing.